As the transformation of the automotive sector and the switch to electric mobility is irreversible, Cyprus is gearing up to embrace the high tide of EV adoption in a bid to counter the rising climate concerns and reduce carbon emissions. Transportation, as a major contributor to global CO2 emissions, has upheld electric vehicles as the stepping stone towards achieving carbon neutrality and zero emission targets. As such, the global EV market share has taken a huge leap in the past decade and is anticipated to accelerate even further. The Cyprus Ministry of Transport, Unicars and Petrolina come together to discuss and suggest reasonable ways to revolutionize the process and show the path to a greener future. Please welcome on stage Yanis Carusos, Minister of Transport, Communication and Works, Christiana Diogenus, CEO of Unicars, Dinos Lefkaridis, Executive Managing Director, CEO at Petrolina. The discussion will be moderated by Manjana Kalogeraki, correspondent of the Hellenic Broadcasting Corporation and the Athens News Agency in Cyprus. Ms. Kalogeraki, the floor is yours. Κυρίες και κύριοι, καλημέρα σας. Καλώς ορίσατε. Δεν χειροκροτήσατε oh, στο δικό μας πάνελ. Θέλουμε το πιο θερμό σας χειροκρότημα για την ελίτ των καλεσμένων που φιλοξενούμε σήμερα. Και θα μιλήσουμε για την ηλεκτροκίνηση. Έχουμε τη χαρά και την τιμή να φιλοξενούμε τον έντιμο Υπουργό Μεταφορών, τον κύριο Γιάννη Καρούσο. Καλώς ορίσατε, κύριε Υπουργέ. CEO της Unicar Cyprus, κυρία Χριστιανά Διογένους. Καλώς ορίσατε, κυρία Διογένους. Και CEO της Πετρολίνα, κύριο Ντίνο Λευκαρίτη. Καλώς ορίσατε και εσείς, κύριε Λευκαρίτη. Σας καλωσορίζουμε, λοιπόν, στο πάνελ για την ηλεκτροκίνηση. Οι περισσότεροι φανταζόμαστε ότι δεν ήρθατε με ηλεκτρικό αυτοκίνητο σήμερα. Δεν έχετε φορτίσει το αυτοκίνητο. Τόσο μαζί με τον υπολογιστή και τα tablet σα. Όμω σε λίγα χρόνια θα έρχεστε με το ηλεκτρικό σα αυτοκίνητο. Τα πώ και τα γιατί θα μα τα πούν οι καλεσμένοι μα σήμερα ευθύ αμέσω. Να ξεκινήσουμε με τον έντυπο έντυπο υπουργό μεταφορών. Καλώ ορίσατε και πάλι, κύριε Υπουργέ. Για να δούμε τι δράσει του Υπουργείου Μεταφορών και τα πρώτα αποτελέσματα που δίνουν, αν θέλετε, και την πρώτη όθηση για τη χρήση του ηλεκτρικού αυτοκινήτου. For using electric vehicles in Cyprus, the most important thing is that Cyprus now has a policy framework for electric mobility. It was approved by the Council of Ministers in 2021. In this context, we establish. Uh, political uh, objectives and the competencies that have to do with electric mobility, everything, the competencies under the Ministry of Transport, the framework provides for deregulation, for laws and many other things. And our national objective is for 2035, 100% of new vehicle registrations to be electric vehicles. So in 13 years from today, all electric vehicles in Cyprus, all new registrations will be electric vehicles. Yes, and this is fully in line with the targets of the European Commission. In 2030, it will be 25%, but then we expect that number to grow by 25% every year. And the targets, we're doing very well with the targets. If we look at the schemes for electric mobility and the interest shown by citizens, we are at 140% of our target for 2022. Yes. So, from the applications that we have had for electric vehicles or for plug-in hybrid uh, cars, you see a total of seven to eight thousand applications. So, eight thousand citizens have said that if they get a grant, they will buy one of these cars, and this is very important, and it's showing that there is great prospect. Citizens are embracing this. Of course, there's a lot to do with the infrastructure. The next scheme of grants will have to do with a, a budget of 4 million uh, 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 infrastructure. We'll talk about infrastructure a bit later. I would like to give the floor to uh, uh, the rest of our panelists for now. This is Theogenus from Unicars. The role of private initiative is very important, Mr. Theogenus, and you are a pioneer in this. What is your first comment? 
Private initiative has an important role to play, of course, and this has been made clear in the introductory speech uh, of uh, Mr. Nicolas this uh, morning that the public cannot address everything because all the projects are complex. So we're in a country which is a small country and, ha and is facing many more uh, challenges and we need the private sector to support and assist and even guide the actions and challenges. So to summarize, uh, this is the role of the private sector. Firstly, we talk about rapidly evolving technologies. The private sector has the experience and the expertise and knowledge to offer and to offer the tools that are needed so that we can grow. The speed and the speed and flexibility are very important in this. And the private sector, of course, is not restricted by bureaucratic procedures, as the mayor previously has said at the beginning, or by policies and politics. So the private sector can bring about quicker results, of course, based on the legal framework and the regulatory framework. <laughs> so you have talked about bureaucracy <laughs> and that's a point to talk about. Obviously, we need to improve our infrastructure. As the minister said, we need long-term planning in that. So at some point, the private sector may not be able to justify that infrastructure. The public sector may not be able to justify that infrastructure, but the private sector can do that. And of course, we need to be responsible towards our environment environment and private companies are accountable for what they do by all their stakeholders. Mr. Lefkaritis from Petrolina, so uh, we have mentioned environmental awareness as well. So a first comment from you on the challenges faced by Petrolina in this new era of electric mobility and this is not very far ahead, the reality of everyone using an electric vehicle, as we have said. Thank you for the invitation. I would like to say that Petrolina traditionally, and you see me, and you always think, oh, this is a petrol company. But I want to say that in the last few years, we have stopped being a petrol company. We are an energy company. And when I say energy company, I mean that we are covering everything that has to do with energy. Energy is electricity and, of course, other products that are coming into play. And as a group, uh, we have a, a, a set up a team <coughs> that's um, studying and uh, examining developments uh, across the world in the field of energy, and we move ahead based on that. As a group, we have established three companies. Petrolina Energy is the first one. This is a company that has applied for uh, photovoltaic parks. We have Petrolina Electric, a second company uh, which has uh, um, obtained permission to grant, to provide electricity. And Petrolina Petro, we may be one of the big companies right now that have started four or five years ago. We started with a person and a half, I would say. And this company now has 32 people in its staff. We have crews uh, that provide assistance to households and industries on photovoltaics. And uh, of course, this is uh, helping towards achieving a greener energy and towards uh, a, a greener economy. So you're working for us, before us, if we can say that. We are trying to anticipate development. So there are many significant challenges. And, um, this is a very sensitive issue for all consumers. Yes, of course.
course, and Petrolina is accepting the challenge, and we will be there for many, many years to come. So, Mr. Minister, let's look at the infrastructure. Where are we going to charge our vehicles, our cars? This is the issue for everybody living in Cyprus. There is a specificity in Cyprus, and we have obtained certain exemptions and deviations from um, uh, EU regulations that were voted recently because we have many residences that are not um, blocks of flats, and so the main charging point will be the residence, will be the house of the citizen. Of course, we will not uh, stay at that. We will have public accessible charging points. We have already started establishing certain charging stations, and I have referred to a plan, a scheme uh, that has a budget of 4 million approved, and the aim is by 2026 to establish to, to create uh, 1,000 charging stations in public accessible areas, either parking and uh, public parking lots, or for example, the parking areas or of hotels, and also on the highways, we will have 20 double charging uh, stations. There is a, a tender that we are currently examining for that, and we are going to create more infrastructure on the highways where uh, we will have PPP, private public partnership agreements to develop infrastructure, including recharging uh, and service areas. Uh, required in collaboration with, uh, with an investor. So on the highways and in publicly accessible areas, we will have charging uh, stations. Town planning permits, town planning permits are also changing right now. And one of the conditions is how many uh, charging points you need to have in your parking spaces, for example. For example, you need to have a specific number of parking spaces for persons with disabilities, for cars with, uh, for disabled people, and the same will be for electric mobility. So I would say that citizens will mostly charge their vehicles at home, and we will also have these public charging stations. And this is the most important important role. We will introduce changes in the law to allow petrol stations to provide this service, because the entire operational model of petrol stations will change in the years to come. We will no longer have conventional fuel the overwhelming majority of cars will be electric cars. This is the Ayenus, you have heard the minister, so a new emerging situation, citizens and consumers and the buyers of cars are called to adapt to new realities. The reactions and the first feedback that you have from people, what is that? How have people accepted these new realities? As the minister has said, we seem to to have a great interest. There, there are many people who are actually interested, but I want to note that expressing an interest uh, to, to buy an electric car is not the same as actually buying that car and being able to uh, buy an electric car. And this is because uh, we need more awareness. So what I mean is that uh, we need to raise awareness on what's electric mobility, on what people know. There was confusion on the various technologies, on what is the plug-in hybrid car, what is an electric car, and uh, many people uh, have uh, applied for this scheme for a grant, and then they were looking for some options, and there was a confusion there, and there was a delay in providing the financial grants, 
important. Many consumers have lost the opportunity because they were more ready. They have photovoltaics at home. They have an electric bicycle, for example. They were more aware and more ready. So uh, we need to have the right mindset for that. And there was a bit of a confusion with the uh, scheme that was announced by the government. We need to be aware of all the challenges and be ready for that. But the issue that regards charging in public spaces continues to be an important issue. I agree with the minister that charging at home will be the main thing, the main form of charging. Um, Uh, electric uh, vehicles, but charging in public stations is the biggest transition, uh, to biggest problem in the transition to electric mobility. So as a company, we have invested in our own private network of charging stations across Cyprus that will be publicly accessible, accessible to all brands of cars. This is not just for our cars. And most importantly, these charging stations will be located in areas where people will go for <laughs> shopping, for example, there is a problem <laughs> with the sound. So these charging stations will be located in public uh, popular areas. We launched our strategy in 2019 on electric mobility, and we brought the first cars in Cyprus back then. So for us, this is a very important transition. Right now, this is the only technology that appears to be able to take us towards green mobility. In the future, we will have more technologies. This uh, network of charging stations is very important for us. We have seven points right now in the area of Paphos, but we will cover the entire country. So this is a very important action for public charging points. And I would say that this will not only serve Unicar's cars, the cars of your company, but everyone. Yes, we are going to provide the service to all car users. We believe in electric mobility in general. Mr. Lefkaritis, the minister has mentioned the transition of petrol stations to the new reality. How close are we to this transition? When are we going to see petrol stations turn into something else? And what is this new reality in your view? This is easy because the petrol stations are there. The issue is the infrastructure, not only the infrastructure, but also we need to have a fast track procedure for obtaining permissions because we have also heard before the candidate presidents talk about this and they said that they will promote digitization, etc. But the bureaucracy we have in Cyprus is unprecedented. unprecedented. Dented. And it's not the fault of the minister or the president of the Republic. We have some regulations that are obsolete. We have very old regulations, and these regulations need to change so that we can allow uh, government officers, and we are by their side, to move forward. But they can't do much because of these old regulations that are still in force. So So this is where we need to start from. So coming to petrol stations, all over Europe there are petrol stations that, not, that do not offer only petrol or, or gas, they offer They have a cafe, they are offering, they have a small supermarket on the site or other things. And these, these uh, premises have the infrastructure, there's a shop, there's everything, so it is much easier for these facilities, for, for petrol stations that have these facilities, to introduce fast-track chargers, and we are 
at a stage of uh, introducing these in petrol stations, but we have a problem with the permissions and, and a problem of bureaucracy. We have an excellent collaboration with the Minister of Transport and with the services of the Ministry as well. But as I have said before, this is a matter of laws and regulations, and this is where we should uh, focus so that all of us and Christiana and all, everybody else who will be dealing with electric mobility to reach the and uh, reach the targets that we have set as a state as well. So this concerns the backstage and not what consumers see. So with regard to the results, what consumers will see after these permissions are granted. So are we going to see small supermarkets and cafes in petrol stations so that the time it takes for our car to charge, that will be maybe half an hour, we can uh, have a break in the cafe. Yes, there are charging stations that require half, uh, maybe a, a quarter to charge the car. And uh, of course, technology is changing, and let's look at our mobile uh, phones. At some point, we had no mobile phones, and now they are everywhere, and you have everything you need, you have it on your mobile. So technology is rapidly changing. So over time, these chargers will be quicker, and until we achieve that, uh, based on the current infrastructure, the quickest is 15 minutes to charge an electric vehicle. So if you need 15 minutes, so you're going to this petrol station to charge, you need to offer that person something, a coffee or, the, the, or sit uh, at a chair and have a drink or something to wait for the charging. So this is a a suggestion that we have discussed with the ministry, and I consider that this is something to be done immediately. Uh, Mrs. Diogenos, would you like to ask something? Yes. It is important to say that Cyprus, with the short distances, has this privilege that the range of, of most electric vehicles is about 400 kilometers. I am uh, driving an electric car, a purely electric car, and for 400 kilometers is more than enough to cover our daily lives. I charge my car once a week only. You only charge your car once a week. Yes, Un unless I need to go outside Nicosia, etc. So I do agree that we need to have some services around the petrol stations that offer charging. But of course, if you're going to charge at home, it's because you need the car for a longer distance, etc. So it's very very logical for these charges to be uh, available where there is infrastructure as well, where you would go to do something or to spend some time anyway, and then you, you find a charger there and you charge your car. Mr. Minister, you have talked about the figures, you have talked about uh, the response of the public to the states. What are your next targets? Are you going to give more incentives to consumers to attract consumers? Και από εδώ και πέρα, and what are the objectives of the government moving forward. Yes, of course, we will give new incentives. We, are, we have one of the most attractive incentive packages at the level of the EU right now. 10,000 euros was the grant for purchasing an electric vehicle. So if you, have a, if you are a family with many children, we were giving 15,000 euros. And also grants for taxi drivers, that is for professionals, drivers, for vans, commercial vans, 3.5 tons, and there was a lot of interest there as well. And this shows that many companies are already thinking about using a green transition and electric mobility. So in the next few months, we will be updating these schemes. In two months, we are going to announce the new scheme of incentives for electric mobility. Will that give extra money? Can it not be the same amount? But with some improvements based on some comments of the past, we're going to 
change the categories, make some changes, and also the way the applications will be made. For example, in the past, somebody applied, and then they would do the market research, and many people didn't actually buy the car in the end. But I would say that we have covered 100% with the schemes, and um, we have exceeded our targets. So, uh, once, uh, when somebody applies, we want that person to have already done the market research so that they are ready to buy the car. This will uh, reduce bureaucracy and the time of examining the applications. Uh, also, there was a uh, an order of priority and everybody was there at 9 o'clock in the morning to apply. Uh, of course, we will have a larger number than the number of grants that we can give and uh, we will be a draw, there will be a draw to decide who will get the grants. Of course, families with more children will have an additional uh, grant. We will, uh, the buses, the taxi drivers, because professionals are using, of course, their vehicle more, so they Yes. So we will, have, we will be more efficient in reducing carbon emissions. We will have two schemes. One is electric mobility and the second one has to do with the withdrawal of old cars and purchasing new cars that pollute less. And that will include cars that produce less than 50 grams of pollutants plus electric vehicles. In public passenger transport in all the districts, we will activate a term in the contract for the supply, for the purchase and supply of electric vehicles in many districts. The district of Limassol has already announced that in their fleet they will have 32 electric buses, so we are going to see electric mobility everywhere, in the buses, in public passengers. Abroad, they are giving uh, incentives for electric taxis and they are, they are also given priority. So when you want to call a taxi, they are asking you, do you want, uh, what kind of uh, taxi you want? And most citizens want to call a taxi that is greener, that pollutes less for many reasons. Of course, and we need to reach the ta our targets based on the Green uh, Deal. And what does Green Deal mean? By 2050, we need to achieve uh, carbon neutrality. By 2030, we need to decrease pollutants by 55% compared to 1990. Are we close to these targets? This generation, I can say, will pay a huge cost for the next generation to have a better future. This will require sacrifices, planning. Uh, we need to be methodical, and in all the areas we will see this Green Deal being implemented in Cyprus. 50% of pollutants is coming from transport. So the bet for Cyprus will be won, or I would say that transport will play a critical role in achieving our targets. If we do well in transport, it's not just electric. Mobility. It is using the bus more, it's a viable, sustainable mobility in the streets, using our bicycles more, so it's an ambitious goal, an ambitious plan that we need to implement. Of course, we need everybody's help. We have made it clear that the targets are there, the grants are there, there is planning regarding electric mobility. We have started already, and now we're thinking about hydro. Hydrogen. Heavy vehicles, for example, will run on hydrogen. Trucks and big lorries, they will run on hydrogen and not electric mobility. So we're looking at the next step already. This is the The minister has said that 50% of pollutants is coming from transport. What about your next uh, targets? Uh, what are the next targets for unicars in this entire effort? 
στην πράσινη ανάπτυξη. As I have said before, we have embraced electric mobility, we have embraced transition to green mobility. And our overall strategy is based on the same values as we, that we have for, as a group for more than 100 years. So we are implementing a sustainable growth model for our company and its people. It's very important because our people need to be retrained uh, right now. We, uh, their training is adapted to conventional cars, and of course, we're moving towards an entirely different, different model of working. And apart from the network of charging stations that I have mentioned before, we're also looking at alternative fuel. Uh, like the minister said, there's hydrogen, and there are also other technologies that are coming. So technology is very important, the digitization of our services also inside cars, and there's also a different, the different way of using mobility. So other models apart from buying a car, we have examples in other countries. And we also need to take into account that Uh, consumers are more sensitive now and demand accountability. In this context, of course, I cannot be very specific right now, but I would say that in the context of this greater green mobility, this is where we're heading. Uh, Mr. Lefkaridis, regarding the, your next goals at Petrolina, and also Mrs. Diogenos has talked about short distances Actually, in Cyprus and the weather conditions, of course, and we all need to take that into account. We have so much sunshine in Cyprus. So what are the next plans for Petrolina? And do you think that in Cyprus we can become a model for Europe, taking into account everything that has been described? I think that as a people, we have this specificity. We are hardworking. And this is something that Uh, has been, is widely accepted. A small, the small country of Cyprus was destroyed in 1974, but we did manage to revive our economy in 2013. Our economy collapsed, but we did manage, as a small island, to to be the test case for Europe with what happened at the time. And many people, of course, lost money, but on the other hand, we saw an economy being revived, and right now we are here, and this could not be taken for granted back in, in the time. As a company, we're looking ahead. We have a vision that we have uh, inherited from our fathers who started from uh, zero, five brothers. My father was one of the founders of the company in 1946 with one car transporting goods, and by 1959, they had 400 cars in their fleet, and they managed to establish the Petrolina Petrol Company against all odds, and we exported, and we grew, and today we are one of the largest companies in Cyprus, but of course we're not stopping here. There is the second generation of our family, the third generation coming in the company right Now, and we are trying to uh, bring the company where we want it to be based on our original vision. Of course, the challenges are there. We have talked about electric mobility, hydrogen, charging, uh, uh, sorry, petrol stations right now can actually adapt to these changes. So I don't think that petrol stations will stop existing as such. Cyprus is a country which, as I have said before, is growing, is developing, is evolving 
living and together with the Republic of Cyprus that was established in 1960, that was when we established our company approximately. So I think we will go hand in hand with the Republic and thank you and we wish you all the best in that. So before concluding, one last um, question, Mr. Minister, on personal mobility scooters that we see around Cyprus. There is a law, has, was the law enacted? What's happening with that? After many efforts and consultations, we, the, the vote, the, sorry, the law was voted by the House of Representatives. It has taken effect with some exceptions that will be applicable in three months. And our country is one of the countries that actually have a law on, on personal mobility uh, vehicles or scooters, as we call them. So these scooters, uh, so there is a speed limit, it's 20 kilometers uh, for scooters. It will be mandatory to have a helmet. Uh, we, they can be used in uh, cycling paths or passenger paths or parks if the local authority uh, uh, gives uh, permission. And we have also talked about micro-mobility, and we said that micro-mobility will be reduced if these cannot use the road network. So scooters can be used in the road network where the upper speed limit is 30 kilometers. This was introduced in the law to give an incentive to local authorities, for example, a residential area that needs to have a speed limit of 30 kilometers for them to want to give that speed limit so that scooters can use their roads. Also, we have control specifications uh, how the scooters will be uh, licensed, etc. There are many details. Now there is a law on that and it's up to the local authorities uh, that have competence in controlling how they're used and to supervise uh, the law. So we have some complaints already, the law has been enacted and of course there will be amendments in the future if problems arise. But we do see that we are on the right track and we are one of the countries that have established a law on scooters, personal mobility. A concluding remark, Mr. Minister, on electric mobility, how and what can we expect moving forward and what is your position on this? It is a given fact that electric mobility is in our lives. It's not the future, it's today. And citizens are, have shown great interest in electric mobility for environmental reasons, but also because it's good for their pockets as well. Let's not forget that. Of course, very important. Uh, a, a family... Uh, um, a family that can buy a plug-in uh, hybrid car right now. For example, I was talking to somebody who bought a car like that, and they said I haven't been to the petrol station for two weeks. And people are comparing how much petrol they were paying using their conventional cars compared to charging an electric car at home. So we have laid solid foundations for electric mobility in Cyprus. We have the action plan, we have the policies that include laws, we have a regulatory framework, a comprehensive plan that has been implemented. There are incentives. The amount of the incentives is 45 million. This is the amount that we have obtained from the Recovery and Resilience Fund, and there will be more to come from national funds. We will announce another scheme in two, in two months. Regulatory arrangements are progressing. Uh, for example, specifications for charging stations. We are preparing a platform. The Deputy Ministry of Innovation is preparing a platform so that everybody who is going to uh, provide such services can be on that platform to regulate the market. There are many issues. We have a time frame. 
we are within our targets, we are at 144% of our targets for this year. There is interest on the part of citizens and surely we are open to suggestions and to criticism as well from everybody because we want as soon as possible to adapt to electric mobility. Even government cars, uh, we will have more and more electric cars Uh, used by the government over the years. Uh, the government is now purchasing more and more electric cars and the aim is by 2030 for all cars purchased by the government to be electric cars. Of course, raising awareness is important as well. This is the Oyanos concluding remark and then to the floor to Mr. Lefkaridis. Of course, we need to move ahead quickly. We need to collaborate uh, between us, the private and the public sector, to move to green mobility. Of course, there are a couple of issues that we need to look at, the network of the charging stations and where the energy comes from to be truly green. And the second thing, what are we going to do with the conventional fleet of cars, all the cars that we have today? And of course, the ministry is already thinking about that. It's a a significant challenge for a country that is also an <laughs> island. <laughs> we are a country where everybody is using a car, a personal car for every citizen, uh, almost. So as Unicars, we have shown our commitment to transition to green mobility and we will be here in the future to help our country make the investments that are necessary, make the necessary sacrifices for a better Future. We're certain for that. Mr. Lefkaridis, the concluding remark is yours. I think that the message that we can give is that we all agree that electricity is on the way, electricity is here, as well as other products. Hydrogen, as the minister said, is something we are seriously considering. So petrol stations will continue to exist because uh, even if it's electricity or hydrogen or any other form of energy, in the future we will be there to serve. We are an energy company, as I said before. We are trying to be, become upgraded to adapt to future technologies. We have people who are trained and are reading and studying and um, seeing what Europe is doing, what we need to implement, etc. And the most important thing is what we said before, we need to overcome bureaucracy so that we can all achieve our aims. And of course, we all want to be there in the future. Petrolina will definitely be there. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ για τα πολύτιμα φώτα σα. Ευχαριστούμε και εσά, φίλε και φίλοι, για την παρουσία σα στο πάνελ μα. Με τον Υπουργό Μεταφορών, την κυρία Διογέννη από τη Γιούνικα και τον κύριο Ευχαρίτη από την Πετρολίνα. Να είστε καλά. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Ευχαριστώ πολύ, Μανιάνα. Ευχαριστώ πολύ.